What's up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Wednesday morning to you, and welcome to our devotional series. We're in that walk through the book of Ephesians, and now we're going to pivot over into Ephesians chapter 6. There's a really, really famous set of scriptures here, really verse 10 all the way through about verse number 20, that refers to like something called the armor of God. And we're just going to take the next several days to kind of like just kind of walk through that thing as we close out uh, the book of Ephesians, both this week and next week. And so let, let's dive in. Verse 10 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full, full armor of God that you, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. So anyway, just a really famous scripture. And then, of course, like I said, eventually we're going to work through each of the components of the armor of God. But just a couple of, of observations as we begin our journey into like the armor of God here. Um, the first thing I need you to recognize is this. It says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Um, there is a sense sometimes that I get where I'm trying to do life on my own. I'm trying to just wake up. And through my own strength and through some willpower and through some self-discipline and just through some sheer grit, just try to power through. And I, I just find that that is sometimes a, 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 a recipe for disaster. Like sometimes that's the formula for defeat. Because when I keep trying of my own strength and I keep failing, it can be very, very discouraging. It's actually when I take a deep breath and I rest in the fact that, no, 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 this is not about my strength. This is about his strength. This is me saying I need to be strong not there, but like in the Lord. I don't need to be strong in willpower. I need to be strong in his mighty power. The, the second thing that it says here, it says, it says, put on the full armor of God. And again, we're going to get through each of those things and the breastplate of righteousness and the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith and all that. We're going to get into each one individually, but all the things that we talk about, I need you to recognize that you are going to actually engage in spiritual battle and you're going to do these things intentionally. When it says put on the armor of God, it's saying this, God has equipped you with all the things that you need, but it is up to you to actually go and put them on. Next observation is this, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and authorities and powers. He goes this, he goes, Notice that when you get angry, you get offended, you're in conflict with another person. It's so easy just to look that person in the eye and say, you know what, it's them and they're the problem. And to, to fail to remember that there is a spiritual battle taking place behind the curtain, that there's clearly something going on in an unseen realm. He calls it um, against spiritual forces in heavenly realms. So it's real obvious to see that there is a battle between good and evil going on beyond what we can see with the physical eye. And, and basically what he's saying is that you think you have conflict with that other person. What you're unaware of is that there's actually a spiritual battle taking place in a way that you can't see it. And so you need to be prepared for spiritual battle. And then the last observation I want to make just out of this opening few verses, because there's so much good stuff, it says, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after having done everything, just stand. I want to give you one last final bit of encouragement. Sometimes in life it feels like that if you're not taking ground, if you're not advancing, if you're not winning, then, then sometimes you're losing. And I think there's a real interesting spiritual principle hidden in here, which is this. Sometimes all you can do is stand. Sometimes it's not even about taking ground. It's just about enduring. There are times in your life, and there's times in counseling appointments where I've had this exact conversation, what a person is going through is just pure hell. And there's nothing that they can do at that exact moment to change any of their circumstance. And I tell them this, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do, or you can do is to endure and just hang on. And so I think that's kind of built in here. Remember this, that there are spiritual forces of evil coming against you. And sometimes the only thing that you can do is just stand your ground, endure and hold on and allow the Lord to do his work in your life. Can I get an amen to that? And so just some great opening thoughts for us to kind of get our head wrapped around as we enter into, hey, you are engaged in a spiritual battle. Let's get ready. Let's get prepared. Can I get an amen? Church, I love you so much. God bless you guys. And I will see you tomorrow.